Hello my adventurous artists and today we're going to focus on creating our very own star constellation map. There's going to be a few things you're going to need so grab a pen and pencil and write these down. You're going to need white paper, wax crayons or markers depending on what you have available, shaving foam, try and get the cheap stuff, don't get anything expensive, a tray or container that can fit your paper inside, a ruler, watery paint or dye. It seems like an odd list, watch the video, take some notes so you know what you need and let's get started. Our keyword for today is constellation. A constellation. What is a star constellation? A star constellation is a group of stars that makes up an imaginary shape in the night sky. They usually are named after mythological characters, people, animals, and objects. Have a think about what you can think of that you've seen in the past. What constellations would you be able to recognize? Try and say the word constellation to the ceiling. Now say constellation to your toes. It's a pretty tricky word to say, but the more we say it, the better we'll be at saying it out loud. When we look at the night sky, it's pretty tricky to try and find the constellations that we get told about. The best thing to do is to try and find keystone shapes. Keystone shapes are usually the big shapes that stand out to you, even though there's lots of the um, stars in the sky. For example, this keystone shape would typically stand out for most people in the night sky because it's a very square, rectangular shape. From there, we can try and identify different elements of the constellation associated with this keystone shape. For example, the arms and legs sticking out of Hercules right here. Once we've found that, we can start to move across the sky and look at other constellations. For example, the keystone shape over here. Once we start looking at this one, we can start to try and identify others nearby. Once we know what they are, we can start to connect them together. For example, these keystone shapes all create several different constellations. We have Hercules on the left, Draco on the right, and as Draco twists around, you get Ursa Minor and Ursa Major. They're known to us as the Little and Big Dipper. However, in many cultures, they're actually to do with bears, little bears and big bears. Draco is pretty much obvious. He's a dragon. He was defeated by Hercules, and you can see Hercules over on this side on the left is actually supposed to be standing on his head. It's quite a weird idea, but they do tell a story. Below Hercules, you can see the Corona Borealis. That is actually the, called the Northern Crown. The Northern Crown is only seen in the Northern Hemisphere, which is a pretty cool thing. And then right at the top above Hercules, you have Lyra. Lyra is basically the same thing as a lyre or a musical instrument. So all of these constellations can be seen together in the night sky. However, trying to find things like the keystone will help you be able to identify all the constellations that you can see on the screen right now. So now we know all about the constellations, it's time to actually start creating some artwork. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to be making our background. Our background is made from a marbled paper. That's what we're going to start with. Then once we've learned how to make our marble paper, I will show you how to create your constellations on this star chart will really help you being able to um, recognize these different constellations in the night sky. And it will also give us an opportunity to learn how to do some marbling effect, which I'm really excited to share with you guys. Let's get started. Okay, so creating our marble textured paper takes a few ingredients like we've already discussed. The first thing you want to go grab is the shaving cream. Um, I usually typically use a very cheap shaving cream, um, one that doesn't have a lot of scent and one that doesn't cost a lot of money because it's going to be used and then thrown away and we don't want to be too wasteful. So make sure before you use the shaving cream you ask the permission of whoever you're borrowing it from because I don't want any upset parents calling me and saying, oh my god, Miss Anson told them to use permission first. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take a baking tray like we discussed. I've put this aluminum foil, this tin foil on here because my, honestly, my tin is a little bit, <laughs> a little bit dirty and I didn't want to get shaving cream all over it. So I've put this down. You don't have to do that. You could also use a plastic container to put the shaving cream in. It's whatever you can find that's going to stop that shaving cream from going on, on to the table, on the sides of the table. So what you want to do is put the shaving cream in your container and you can see how oh, shaving cream is so satisfying. Stands up and creates these cool 
like clouds. I feel like I'm, I'm flying in an airplane right now. It's so cool. All right, so it's very satisfying. Uh, here is my shaving cream. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple of tests and see how my paper comes out. What the f Now, what you wanna use to add the color is watered down paint or you could try using um, the washable markers paint that we've made in the past or a food dye anything that's like a liquid consistency paint so it has water in there to be successful at this some kind of ink for example so first of all i'm going to try using a blue here's my blue so i actually to make this blue i used i think it was acrylic and watered down acrylic and uh, you can actually see some of the acrylic right there still in my container. But I want to use, and I'm kind of just dotting it onto the shaving cream. Like you can see right here. Creating those mountains of shaving cream. I keep laughing because this is honestly so satisfying. And it's so much fun to do. And I'm really excited that I get to share this with you guys. Shaving cream with the blue. And then I'm going to add, get it off my brush, I'm going to add a little bit of purple, still got my washable markers in there. Now the purple is quite a deep purple, so it almost has a blue tint to it as well. Now remember, we're trying to make this look like a galaxy, so it wants to kind of be more dark, um, like a space galaxy. And then I'm going to add a hint of this pink slash red right down the middle right there and now that's without black and then I'm going to add one with black and see what it looks like because I want to see which one I prefer for my artwork all right now there's plenty of ink inside my shaving cream and now what we want to do is if we were to print like it is right now it would come out so basically we're going to get that marble effect by mixing some of this shaving cream. So I'm going to actually mix my shaving cream with my brush. And if we were to just leave it alone, there would be a lot of white areas left. And white areas are just going to stay white on our paper. Paper to be covered in a kind of different array of these shades. And we might need to add a little bit more paint. Once we've mixed all this together, we'll see how it looks. It's like mixing a, it looks like frosting. <laughs> I don't recommend not go down well. Let's add a little bit more. Let me get this off my brush right now. Let's add a little bit more of this blue. And uh, kind of mix that around. Oh, I love that color blue. All right, now let's see how this works. So what you're gonna need is your I'm going to put this guy out of the way make sure you put him on a I just realized my camera turned on I'm sorry I'm going to put him on the side right here so I can use him in a second and then what you're going to want to do is grab your paper now you can use any type of paper but I recommend just regular printer paper you're going to want to push this down this is why I'm using this tray because I already knew that my paper would fit on this tray so I'm just going to push it down gently. You want to kind of feel the shaving foam hitting all the different, so right is not hitting this part of the paper. So I'm going to push it down a little bit further until I feel that shaving foam underneath. It's kind of like a gentle push that you're trying to push down. If you push too hard, you're going to just get shaving cream everywhere. And you can even start to see some of the ink is coming through onto the other side, which is perfect. I've only got all of the paper to touch or to make contact with that shaving foam. You're going to want to peel this guy off. You want to peel it off like so. Oops. Try to make sure my aluminum foil stays down. Oops. There we go. And I'm going to move this guy out of the way for a second. And then what you want to do is make sure you're doing this on a surface that you're okay to do this on. And you are going to scrape off the shaving foam. And I'm going to scrape with my ruler 
on an angle and just scrape it across that paper Oops. like so and then scrape that shaving foam back into my container oh wow that marble effect is amazing look at that that is so cool all right so i have my marble effect it looks great however i do feel like this is a little bit too blue for my galaxy is so i'm going to try it again this time around i'm going to add a little bit more of a black to my to my shading frame so let's try this again so I want to make mine a little bit darker of my shaving frame in here. So I'm just going to add the black. See what happens. Adding that black in here. Now remember, black is a really strong color. You don't need as much as you probably think you do. It really will blend a lot more than you probably realize. All right, let's try that. So I'm going to mix this in a little bit. And you can see how it's kind of mixing in with that blue right there. Kind of creating those swells. Oh, I'm excited to see what this one comes out like. I'm going to add a little bit more of this blue too to this edge right here. Because I feel like that edge is a little bit too plain. Maybe right here too. And then let's get this black and get some more of that black in this corner. Make the edges darker, that's gonna definitely make it feel like the galaxy kinda just goes on and on and on in the distance. So we'll see what this guy looks like. Alrighty, let's take a look. Push right there. All right, so let's try number two. Let's push this down, same again. Trying to feel, I've got shaving cream everywhere. Look, I'm gonna go on the side. Oops. So I'm gonna try pushing it down again, gently. Feeling for that paper making contact with that shaving foam. Alright, let's have a look. And hopefully this time around. It will be a little bit. All right. Now let's take my artwork out of the way. Let's try and scrape off this shaving frame again. All right. So again, and you're just going to scrape it gently across that paper, holding your paper down. Oh wow. Go this way as well. Make sure I get all of that off. Put that back into the container. Oh, that one came out amazing. Look at that. That's so cool. All right. So I'm going to let this guy dry. And this is the one I'm going to use, I think, out of these two. And you can do this as many times as you want. You can keep pulling and scraping and trying all these different combinations. But I was, so I'm going to have a go with this one. All right, let them dry and I'll see you in a second. So now that we have our marble effect and it's all dry, I managed to get all of the um, extra shaving foam off. We're going to start looking at adding those constellations that we talked about earlier on today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I add a constellation slide in um, just after I've spoken or reference point and just pause the video. So to start creating the constellations, the first thing we need to identify is that keystone shape that I was referring to earlier on. So let's put in the keystone shape of Hercules first. So right here, I'm going to use my um, wax crayon. You could use a marker or a pencil, it's up to you. And I'm going to, that was kind of like a squished square for his torso. That's how we know that we've got the um, Hercules' keystone shape in. We can even start adding in a line. If you want to use a ruler, you can. 
So I'm adding my keystone shape in. There. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start adding his legs and arms. So first we're going to do his leg. And this leg is a bent leg. A lot of people think sometimes that actually Hercules' head is up here. His head is meant to be over here. So we're going to add his leg. And to do that we're going to add two more stars. One over here. And one going to make up his leg or his bent knee. Right there. Then we're going to have his back leg, and we want a couple of stars for his back leg. We want one right here, one right here, and then one down here. And we just join those together like a bit of a dot to dot. He's looking a little bit. Now we want his arm, because on on um, his constellation, he's actually throwing or like using a bat kind of thing. So he's got a big arm coming up here, and then his bat comes up here, or his club, I should say. There's that. Okay, finally, we have his other arm. So we want to add one more star. I'm going to try and make my stars a little bit more obvious in a minute. There we go. So I think if I remember right, there's one for his arm, and then he has one, two, three, four more stars connected together over here. They're all quite little. There we go. Nice. Okay, so there we have Hercules. What we could do now is we could add the crown, the northern crown down here, up of seven stars. So we're going to do one, two, three stars, four, five, six, seven. There's our seven stars for our northern crown. And then what we can do is we can add lines that support that one for that constellation. So there is our northern crown. Okay, and then we're going to go over here. And remember, if anybody can remember, what was the one that was over here that kind of wound around called? It was like a dragon. We're going to add Draco. And remember, in the story, Hercules is actually standing on Draco's head, which is kind of weird, but there we go. So we're going to add Draco over here, and we want to make our keystone shape for Draco. It's a little bit smaller than the keystone shape for Hercules. So the keystone shape was the same kind of shape as, but a bit smaller. So there's Draco's head. You know, add those lines in, like so. And then remember, Draco's body snakes around down here. Now the the body for Draco is actually quite long. There's quite a lot of stars in it, but we're going to try our best. So there's quite a straight line for one star over here and then one more. So there's the first part of Draco's body. Then it starts to come around. So we're going to add one star going down, two stars, three stars going down. We're going to come around. And again, my stars are a little bit small. I might need to make them a little bit bigger. All right, and then we start to snake around here. So we're going to add one, two, three, four, and then two more over here for the rest of his body. And there's his body snaking around straight there. Okay. There is Hercules, Draco. And now we want to add the one that everybody knows, the Little Dipper, or Ursa Minor. Remember, it's a little bear. So we're going to do the keystone shape. Look for that keystone shape again. Nick them together. Now, so the story is that Ursa Minor reminded people of a, um, like a spatula or a ladle. So they called him Little Dipper. Now he's got to make his handle. So we're going to add those. Well, actually, there's a few more stars, but the ones we're going to put in are three stars right here. Add them in. There we go. And then we're going to do the Ursa Minor, or the Big Dipper, down here. And remember, that means the Big Bear. So one, two, three. And then we're going to do our keystone shape for our bear right here. Like that. 
and then they connect together. Perfect. Uh, so Major actually goes off over this way and it has legs and stuff like that. So it's kind of important to remember it's not just this part of the constellation. Now we have this little gap right up here, which is where we're going to add uh, Lyra or Leah, Lyra. Uh, which is the Leah. So that's the moon. Add the keystone shape. This is quite a small constellation. It's quite a tiny one that we can add in to our space right here. So there's that keystone shape that we were talking about. Leah is quite interesting because Lyra has a very big bright star that comes down here is Lyra and then this really big star right down here is called Vega and like I said it's really bright you can really see it it's a great way of being able to spot the rest of this constellation system okay so then what we can do once we have a constellation in place if you want to you can add a little bit of a an edge using the side of your crayon make those stand out and around the outside perfect all right next step you're going to try and find yourself a yellow a yellow right here and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and make those stars just stand out a little bit more adding that yellow in around the edges of the stars Make them really glow. Now, if you want to, you can add all of the names of your cost into. It's up to you. I'm trying to think if I'm going to do it or not. I might do it on mine. Or on some of my important ones, I should say. We'll see. But I think it's a really cool way for us to be able to remind ourselves are and these this constellation you should be able to or this set of constellations as you can see them on my page right now you should be able to see them in the northern hemisphere in america around about springtime anywhere anytime around about now actually is for us at springtime so that should work really well for you the thing you need to do is just remember that you want to find a really good area for, for sky watching shall we call it star watching um you need to find someone that's quite dark okay so ask an adult at home see if you can find a good place to be able to drive to or some like some of the constellations or you might be really lucky you might live somewhere where on a farm or something where you don't have a lot of light pollution which is other bright lights around whereas where i live here i live in the city we have a lot of light pollution that means i don't get to see many stars at night which is a shame all righty so I'm also going to do constellations. Constellations is a really tricky word to spell. So it's C O N S const E L A T I O N. Yes constellations okay I mean, my letters look pretty cool it almost looks like a star map you might find in a in a treasure chest or something like that there we go nice all right add that in there now, like I said, what I might do is I actually might add the names of my constellation. If you want to do that too, you can. I'm just going to make that really obvious. And what I suggest you do when you do add them, if you're going to add them, is add them to the side so they don't accidentally get confused. So if I was going to add my constellation's names, like um, Hercules, I would put to this side, and maybe Draco I would put up here. So we could put Draco. Pet. My wax crown is not the best for writing with but i'm sure you guys can figure that one out um and then i'm going to put hercules over here uh, there we go there's hercules 
these. And then I might just do this one down here. So that would be Ursa Major. Ursa meaning bear. Ursa. And Major meaning big. Major. And that's the Latin for big bear. All right. So we have our constellations. So we've got Hercules, Draco, Ursa Major. You've got the Little Dipper. The Corona Borealis, all right, or the Northern Crown. Well done, guys. I'm really excited about our really cool constellations map. It's great. I'm really impressed with it. That looks awesome. All right, until next time, guys. Bye.